This podcast is a production of Unfiltered Studios. If you would like to know more about joining Unfiltered Studios, please visit our website at unfpod.com for more information. This episode of the Fandalorian Podcast is brought to you by the Adler Real Estate Team. If you live in New York, anywhere between Manhattan and Montauk, and are looking to buy or sell, you need to call the Adler Real Estate Team. This real estate company is run by a husband and wife duo that, in addition to being real estate agents, are also a public school teacher and a police officer. It is a family-run business that gives you the attention that, and care you need when you are about to make one of the most important decisions of your life. And I know from experience. Also, if you mention that you are a fan of the Fandalorians, they will be able to get you up to 2000 back at closing. It doesn't matter if you are buying or listing. So, if you are buying or selling anywhere from Manhattan to Montauk, call the Adler Real Estate Team at 631-384-6372. Or check out the website at adlerrealestateteam.com. Mention the Fandalorians and save today. Welcome back, class. On today's episode, we discuss another Disney acquisition, and then we're joined by June Gervais, author of Jobs for Girls with Artistic Flair. All this and more in a Working Girls with June Gervais episode of The Fandalorians. Teachers by day, nerds by night. That is the bell. Class is in session. Welcome to the Fan Lawrence Podcast. Teachers by day, nerds by night. Proud part of the Unfiltered Studios Podcasting Network. This is the number one public school teacher pop culture fandom podcast in the country. Here to give you the latest news in the world of entertainment, lively discussion on all matters of pop culture and fandom. A lot of pop culture in this. There's a lot yeah. of... You powered through it two weeks in a row here. Yeah, there's a lot you here. got it. I'm looking at this. this it's a, a tongue lot. twister a little bit. It, 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 a bit much. It's a bit much sometimes. But I got through well, it. Anytime there's pop and pod, you want to mix yeah. those two up. That's what, yeah. It never comes out right. It doesn't always end well. It did today, though. Since we get new listeners all the time, allow me to introduce ourselves. My name is Mr. Richardson, fourth grade teacher and a man who left his daughter's game today, and she scored her first basket. Guys, she did it. She finally got her first basket. Yes. She scored. And I want to add this. She got her first basket. And about a minute later, she got her first technical. <laughs> so we got that. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, that that's we call that the Rashid Wallace. Yeah, that's right. Now everyone at home is Googling Rashid Wallace. And I'm going to get the T, but that's okay. She did great. She did great out there. She got on the ground, and they blew the whistle, and she wouldn't stop pulling for the jump ball. And it happened four different occasions, enough where the ref, you know. But you know what? She's a winner. Coach is with me. The man who had another first in the McDonald household. Mr. McDonald. Last week was what now? What happened last week? The first. No, well, there's been a, you know, it's a number of firsts. You know what it's 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 growing up with with children. So for those who don't know, my kids are now 12 and 9. They're both boys. And they were playing downstairs doing Lord knows what. And all of a sudden, my oldest son comes up and he has like a gash in his forehead. Not a big one, but like a gash. (laughs) And I'm like, hey, uh, what happened? And so he goes, I don't know. <laughs> and so I, I call up the younger one and I'm like, Hey Fitz, what happened? And what do you think he said? I don't know. I don't know. So it's the first time that they schemed together yeah, right. to intentionally lie to my face. And I got to tell you, I'm actually kind of a little proud. You should be. Yeah. You know what? Working together. They got that bond already. Yeah. Listen. You know what? They need a common enemy. Yes. I did that with my brother. It's like, listen, we're both going to get in trouble for this. Let's just play dumb. I don't know. I've always had this scar. What are you talking about? <laughs> the phone yeah, I'm getting me. gaslighted by my own children. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? This has always been here. My, you don't. You never loved me. My <laughs> other co-teacher, the man who started listening to Wicked, Mr. G. He did it. Yes. It just finally came up. I listened to the women. I listened to June's book. And now I'm listening to Wicked. 
and it took a while for me to get here, but I started listening today. And there was a funny, funny part in there where the guy said he got need. He bent over, someone kicked him square in the buttocks, and then he released his bowels. And I thought about it. I listened back to it, and I was like, oh, he literally got the kicked out of him, and it made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, good self-edit ed- there, Charlie. Yeah. Um, yeah. How many hours? 21. Oh, that's a long one. Yeah. And joining us today, author of Jobs for Girls with Artistic Flair, June Gervais. Thanks for being here today. Hello. You guys have almost, I keep controlling my laughter the whole time you're doing the introduction and you guys are talking. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be in the room yet, but I keep wanting to laugh. But you can so laugh. Weird. You're here. We know you're there. But they didn't know who I was yet. It's just oh, a sure. They're like, laugh. who's that rando oh, laughing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to think you just put a solo female laugh track on your career. Yeah, yeah we just pump in <laughs> fake audience you know laughter. <laughs> If you're gonna we're gonna get you to laugh for like 20 seconds at the end we're gonna add it in post <laughs> just, so, yeah that way we'll take that like what you just did there charlie cut, cut that flip it loop it just loop it yeah, we got exactly this. This, it's, not, it's not our first show no. it's, not, our first it's not even gonna be hard oh my god i'm gonna be your official laugh track i'm psyched you know we'll That's take funny. it we'll take it tell us a little bit about yourself sure my name is june gervais i'm a writer i live here on long island and i have for most of my life I'm the author of Jobs for Girls with Artistic Flair, which, although it sounds like a career manual, actually is a novel, <laughs> sort of a crossover YA adult novel. It's officially an adult novel, but um, the protagonist is an 18-year-old woman named Gina Mully, and she uh, is aspiring to become a tattoo artist at a time in the 1980s when there really weren't a lot of women in tattooing. It was much grittier. It wasn't mainstream yet, a um, little rough around the edges. So it's uh, it's her coming of age story, her falling in love for the first time. And it came out of just a lot of passions I have. I love tattoos. I have, There's a lot of Long Island in the book. There's a lot that I love about Long Island. There's a lot I don't love about Long Island also. That's also in the book. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's me. Is the entire out. book about property taxes? Because that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. She's 18 and doesn't own any property yet. So that one's not. Well, it was the real. 80s. You could buy like a house for like $77, right? Yeah. There, yeah. There is something wild in that she and her girlfriend at some point buy, you know, they uh, rent a little cottage and it, uh, somehow on their waitress and apprentice uh, and gas station salaries, which is now outlandish and impossible. Now, we are teachers ourselves. So we always ask this question to the guests that come in so who is your favorite teacher of all time mm, this is a tie so my second grade teacher mrs Desoy, has a special place in my heart forever because we actually corresponded we have been now corresponding for over 30 years we wow. still Great. write you know, each my, other letters my wife has been doing the same thing with her second grade teacher must be still <gasps> about second grade. yeah are you serious that's amazing I, it's, there's something really, like she's got to be in her 80s now, but um, yeah, she saw me grow up, go to college, get married, have kiddos, p- publish this book, you know, um, and then the other one was probably Mr. San Filippo, who's my 12th grade history teacher, and introduced me to like traditional Irish music, and was sort of gave me hope that, um, that unconventional people can find a life after high school. Well, that's so funny because Mr. G teaches second grade, and I teach yes. high school. Yeah. Hey. I teach history as well, so yeah. We and got Mr. all bases covered, and then Mr. Richardson's there. He yeah. teaches yeah, fourth. Well, he teaches fourth, and I have a fourth grade son. Oh, so. there you go. See, I'm, see, I'm a part of this now, guys. I'm vibing with all of you. Yeah, I almost yeah. left. I'm like, you know what? Well, why am I here? But now I'm a part of the show. I appreciate that. <laughs> so we're teachers, but we're also nerds by night, you know, because we had to work during the day. So, what yeah. are you the most nerdy about? Right. So when you sent me this question in the email, I, I got a little insecure that maybe I didn't have enough nerd cred, but then I decided I do. <laughs> I absolutely geek out over tattoos, tattoo artists, tattoo history. I follow a lot of um, boundary pushing tattooers on Instagram. So that's fun. My husband and I are big board game nerds. So right now we are obsessed with the board game Everdell. We play it an embarrassing amount of times per week sort of what we do instead of watching TV. And that's why I don't know what's on TV. How long does it take you to play like one game? So we both work at home and Mm -hmm. we play it on our lunch break every day. So it's about like 35 minute game. Oh, okay. It's It's delightful. It's It's a little oasis in the middle of the day. Gotcha. It's it's not like one of these games that takes time. 
Well, according to the internet, Mr. G, which is never wrong, it says mm-hmm. a game will last between 40 and 80 minutes. Of Everdell? That's uh, that's not me. That's the internet. Do you uh, know we got it down to a science, I think. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, do, you know, do you know you're on our podcast line? June, what are we doing here? Come on. What? What? Are you lying, June? Are you yeah. only playing, playing in third? Yeah. I'm just totally kidding. I'm totally joking. What? <laughs> it's just like speak. doctor journalism. He goes, you said 30 minutes. It says 40. <laughs> Why are you lying? What is this game? I'm though? telling I don't know. you. I'm not aware of the game, though. What, what is it? About? How do you? What is it about? Well, how do I even describe it? Oh my gosh, it's guys, it's so nerdy. Oh, what a perfect place. Look I'm who on. you're talking I feel, to. Mm. I feel instantly better. Okay. It involves it. It's it takes place. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking about this. <laughs> it takes okay, place right. in the forest. And okay. the object is you are building a little city of forest creatures, you know, and they've got little jobs and houses, and you have to get the most points, and there's resources and berries and twigs and resin, and it's this is like Gosh. Animal Crossing. This sounds yeah. amazing. No, it sounds really good. This Listen, good. June, I play Dungeons and Dragons, so okay, it, this okay, is okay. not. It, it, oh, don't be embarrassed. Oh. Okay, everything thank you. is safe. Everything's fair here. We're having a good time. This feels very safe. Thank you. It's a safe place. Yeah. You're in a safe. I would place. like to thank our sponsor for today, Everdell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could send us a new board because we wore it out. Wow, Wow, that is a loved board (laughs) right there. Yes, definitely. But you know what? You're probably going to get that new board and be like, it's just not the same. same. And you're going to go back to the old right. They don't make it the way they used to. Yeah, there's no pizza grease on this one, man. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you for joining us today. We can't wait to talk to you about your book and other things. Thank you so much. Love having you here so far. Infectious laugh. I love it. We're good. Okay, how can you support the show? Mr. McDonald, I'm going to read this correctly because Mr. G has bold of the things I leave out every week. Yes. So I'm going to focus in. I'm going to really lock in today. And so what you're saying is Mr. Out. G has differentiated the lesson plan. Exactly. He definitely did. He definitely did. All he the teachers right now are going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone who's not a teacher is like, wait, what? I've been waiting 100 <laughs> episodes for this. Uh, first, start by asking your child's teacher if you need anything. Teachers from kindergarten to high school need something. We always talk about tissues because, like, quite frankly, we always run out of tissues constantly. Um, send them tissue, send them what they need, ask them if there's anything you can pick up for their class, and tell them the Fandalorians told me you need these. Please, especially tissues. And if you want to buy our merch, you need to head to the T Public link. The link to our storefront is in the bio as always. Uh, all our proceeds go to Laney's Legacy of Hope, which is a nonprofit organization that engages in fundraising activities to provide assistance to families with someone who's suffering from pediatric cancer. Volunteer run program, there's no CEO, no board. So when you buy our merch, all of our money goes to them. We don't get any money. The money goes to the kids, family owners. You know we love the kids. And if you want to check out their site, go to laneyslegacy.org. Uh, find out about their wonderful organization. And finally, if you live on Long Island, not in Long Island, on Long Island, check out Red Shirt Comics in downtown Port Jeff Village for all your comic needs. And for those listeners who don't, remember, shop your local comic shops when you can. There we go. Mr. Jihad, I do. Did I do good? You did good. Time? You did Ask good. Did anything? All right. No, I'm fine you're good. Listen, I took care of everything. I did my part. I'm doing my part out here. So now it's time to jump into it. Now it's time to play the jingle, J.D. and Ben Lawrence. Now it is time for the morning announcements. Mandalorian fans, won't you lend me an ear? I hope this podcast sound is crystal clear now listen up people i got something to say these are the morning announcements for today jd and the band lawyers everybody uh we have one announcement today disney ceo bob Iger announces deal with epic games to build disney universe that lives side by side to fortnite the process what that means as i continue reading uh, listen, he said that the entertainment giant will leverage $1.5 billion deal with Epic Games to build a Disney universe akin to the metaverse where consumers can engage with Disney IP, including from Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars. Mr. G, explain that to me like I'm a five-year-old. Basically, what they want to do is, did you watch Ready Player One or read the books? Read the book, Ready Player read One? Read the book, yes. Okay. June, did you are you familiar with that movie and or book? I know of it. I haven't read it okay. or seen it, but I know of it, yeah. So the idea is that there is a metaverse, but they don't want to actually mm-hmm. use that word because that's uh Somebody Facebook. Owns it. Yeah. Right. I so they're gonna call it a universe. Basically, mm-hmm. from my understanding, what I think it's gonna be like, 
It's like, you know, when you go to Netflix and then from there you watch a movie, this is you go to the Disney universe and then play a game. If you've ever watched your kids play Roblox, where you actually go to the platform and gotcha. then from there you find There's a game to play. Multiple games. Oh, exactly. Okay. Kind of so how that's... I, I understand. I, um, my daughter has started playing Fortnite and I jumped in one game like, oh, let me try to play. Uh, and they turned off all the building things. I don't know how they're yes. building because I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. And then I won. I came in first place. I was proud of myself. You know, as a 40 plus year old man. And so then you retire. My life you're like, I'm on top. Oh, yeah, I'm out. I'm out the game. But I noticed in addition to playing the regular game mode, there's numerous other game modes in Fortnite than just the whole land and battle kind of thing. Yes. Oh, so Disney's creating their own. Okay. That sounds good. Um, listen, it's he continues. We have a decent licensing business. The Spider-Man game and Sony, one of the most successful games of 2023. I thought we could do more. As we studied it, we were really impressed with what Epic has been able to accomplish with Fortnite. Hey, look, it's not like I read ahead and knew where it was going with Fortnite. Dizzy already has a presence in Fortnite with their Epic deal. It's consumers interoperability, digital... by the way. Was... Okay, here's the thing. I'm going <laughs> to skip over it, man. And no one would have known. But now you had to jump in and make me look bad. All right, listen, um, I'm off hours. So I'm just having trouble processing that word. But it's okay. Buy digital goods. It's going to be fun. Disney has things going on. They're excited. Apparently, he listens to our show because we mentioned a few episodes that Sony should look into the video games catalog for movie ideas. Disney pulled the Uno reverse, took their movie catalog to video games. Kids talk about Fortnite all the time. Will this be the Seven Dwarfs Diamond Mine or the Outlands, the barren wasteland where the exiled animals of the Pride Lands live? What's going to happen with this, McDonald? Your thoughts? Well, I mean, this is super smart by Disney because, you know, it's if you can't beat them, buy them or like make a deal with them because they, you know, I feel like if this happened 20 years ago, Disney would be like, we're starting our own studio to do this. And they're like, no, 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 we've learned from that. We're going to make a deal with someone who already knows how to do it. And so this way, I have a feeling it's going to get done really well. So this is going to be the seven dwarfs diamond mine. This is going to make money for them. I'll say this. This is a brilliant move. There are, now I don't play as many video games as I did once upon a time, but I know there's a couple of games that they put out there now that you just play. They put it out there and they don't do like Roblox 2 or 3. It's the game and within the game, they keep adding more and more and more and kids are adding tokens to buy more. Same with Fortnite. So if Disney, which has a ridiculous amount of IP that they're from the princess stuff to Marvel, to Pixar, to Star Wars, everything, they have all the toys, a lot of them, put them all in the box, come up with their own little system like this. This is brilliant. You have the IP, you're sitting on it, and this is the amount of money kids drop on Fortnite is ridiculous. On the skins and the weapons. Yes. and before their parents realize how much they're paying for it. I would do it if I could. I don't have that kind of money, but I'm... I'm, I'm but your kids do thing. because it's yours. Apparently they do. You know what? I have to cut them off immediately. Uh, June. Oh, I wish I could weigh in on this. I'm the wrong kind of nerd. I'm I'm just the book nerd kind. I can tell you about my recent favorite book involving video games, and that is all. So I apologize. Your kids don't uh, your kids don't play the Fortnite. <laughs> now nah, they do actually. My older one does. Yeah, my 14 year old plays Fortnite. But now you've got me thinking. I'm going to check in with him. Is is any money being spent? I'm not sure how he would have gotten access. I got to him that, in trouble. They are resourceful, and I <laughs> thank are you clever, for this. Yeah. This is my parenting tip for the day. Thank you, Fandalorians. Yeah. Um, I just apologize on to your you. brother. I just knocked on your son. I yeah, I like to apologize now. to him right now. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> he was living the good life. He had like I got a thousand skins. They don't even know who are the Fandalorians. What did they do? I'm sorry, man. All right. Gravy train is over, child. Yeah. <laughs> so Charles. There happens to be a picture of what this could look like, a mock-up. And those of you that are listening to our audio medium here and can't see these pictures, it reminds me of in Inside Out. Yes. And they were sitting in the little command center looking mm. out at all the little worlds. So there was that world, this world, that world. Looking at a picture of it, they have an ESPN world. So but like, I also feel like this is when they show you a, a early design of a yeah. car that's coming out that looks really cool. And then by the time it comes out, it looks like every other car. Yeah, but if you're going to go mm -hmm. there and play sports, you know, you pop on a basketball game, Mr. Richardson. Pop on to whatever they, hockey or, you know, football yeah. game. You know, yeah. if they have, like, one-stop shop where it's actually quality, not like Roblox, where right. it's like... But they are know, stepping on Roblox's corner here. 
but if you're looking at the the medium as a visual art then they're stepping on roblox's corner but there's plenty of money for june sun to spend in all these different avenues <laughs> And because yep. <laughs> we may have shut down Fortnite, but he's going to go to this. So listen, he, there's still money. To be, June's funding the operation, and they're getting June's money apparently already. <laughs> exactly, so everything should be fine. You know, with all Actually, that my little one is money. Into... Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I I wish that publishing a book gave you infinite amounts of money for Fortnite or whatever you like. Yeah. Actually, my little one likes Roblox too, so that does make me wonder. I would imagine I don't know anything about this stuff, but I would imagine Disney would have very high quality graphics and yeah. uh, very beautiful visual environments. And I wonder because I think part of the appeal of Roblox is that it's sort of blocky and it's simplistic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah lots of, and you can make um, your own games. Yeah. Yeah, but that's interesting. I bet, well. June, the kids in your house already figured this out. They go to dad for V-Bucks and Robux, not not mom. They're not they asked for, for the, the birthday. Yeah, they're not hitting you up for Do they pull the one where they're like, dad, can we have V-Bucks? Mom already said it was okay. <laughs> no, they know better than that. Yeah, We are burying these children. Like, why? They must be so mad. Why? Like, a week from now, her kids are going to be listening to the podcast and be like, how do they know all my moves? Nah. So, our, our, our first one-star <laughs> review is going to be them. They're just going to call the podcast. <laughs> Worst podcast ever. My mom <laughs> took away my Fortnite. Like, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> Their whole review is going to be Fandalorians blow up my spot. Exactly. <laughs> Don't let your parents listen to them. Okay, Disney has all the money in the world, and apparently they're getting all the money plus two. They're getting all of it. With this, we're all going to be a part of it, especially June's kids. But it's time <laughs> to move on to our assembly. It's time to talk to June about her wonderful book. Uh, bell's going to ring. We're going in the first period. We'll see you there. First period assembly. And who doesn't love a first period assembly <laughs> the day? It's like the best way to start off your day. Yes, and our you assembly. Know, sitting could... here, sitting here up on the stage of the assembly, I could see some kids making out in the back row. Is anybody <laughs> going to talk to them, or just we let that happen? Here you just let that assemblies? happen. Okay. <laughs> we, should, we try. To you know what? One thing you learn about being a teacher, June, is you pick your battles. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2024. If we say something to them, we'll get canceled. We just got to. I don't know what to do. It's not safe. It's hard out here. We're kidding. We would stop it all the time. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I got bills to pay. Guys, you're going to get fired early. <laughs> or, I have to pay for Fortnite. Excuse <laughs> Our assembly. We're laughing a lot today. Our assembly today is an author assembly where we dive deep into June Gervais' novel, Jobs for Girls with Artistic Flair. June, can you tell us about your book? Sure. Yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a coming of age story. I, maybe I should have saved all that for this moment when the assembly started. But no, to be it, fair, I shouldn't have asked you this again. But I'm <laughs> no, but really, what should the have first asked, time you asked me to talk about myself, and I was just like, "What? I'm I'm just the vessel for this novel." Who cares about it. me? This is my <laughs> book, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> But yeah, coming of age story, a young woman becoming a tattoo artist in 1980s Long Island when uh, the field was mostly male, kind of rough around the edges. And it's a uh, coming of age love story. She is falling in love with another young woman and um, kind of coming into her own. So that's the that's the book in a nutshell. I uh, I listened to this book from cover to cover, which doesn't exist in the digital audio cover medium. to digital cover. I exactly. My June, my favorite classification book is YA. Mm -hmm. So mm. that is my favorite. I do love YA novels. I find that although they're young adults, I'm young at heart. And we actually had a guest, Josh from the comic book store, enlightened us all on the the marketing behind YA. But I do like wow. a good YA novel. They're for um, everyone, not just young adults. I also started reading this book. I didn't finish it. What I enjoy most about books, and I've said this on the podcast before, is the characters. Like, Anything I'm ready, it's a TV show, movie, whatever. If you like the character, you're going on the journey. Or if you care about the character or at all, hate or whatever. For example, like in the TV show You, I hate that character so much. I can't wait for him to get his come up in, so I'm I'm there for the ride. Or a character you just enjoy, you like them and you care enough about them to go on for the ride. From well, remember, Mr. Oh, Mr. Richardson, remember the opposite of love isn't hate, and the opposite of hate isn't love. The opposite of both of those emotions are indifference. And there's no indifference for Gina. I love this character from the beginning. A couple mm -hmm. pages in, I knew who she was. I cared about her. 
and I just can envision her in this world. And it's not like a, a story where, as you said, she wants, let's say she wants to go off to be a doctor and she's getting everything in order to go to college, whatever. She's literally sitting there viewing the world she wants to be in on the daily basis at, you know, her brother's job. She sees it. It's right there. It's tangible. It's in front of her. And the steps to get there are right there. But because of the time period and the way it is, it's harder to take that step, which is almost it's like right in front of her. It's easier than the journey. You know, it's just, I love that part of it and I'm in for it. I can't wait to finish reading it. it, it it's truly a great book. It really is. Um, Thank you so much. Ago. All right. So could you share with us kind of the inspiration or the catalyst that really started the initial concept for this book? Sure. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for reading the book, starting the book. It means a lot. You have a lot. Your teachers have very, very busy jobs. And you, I know you have additional work to do when you get home and you have families. And it just really means a lot to me. Um, so yeah. what was the, what was the spark for the book? A couple of things. One is that I just always wanted to write a novel. I knew since I was seven, I wanted to be a writer. Then when it came time to actually, I was 19 when I started writing this book. I was like, well, so two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's very flattering of you nice, nice. the the podcast listeners cannot see my wizened aged face so um, <laughs> but uh yeah when i was 19 i was like well i'm getting older i better start writing a book so i decided no, when you're 19 is when you think you know everything so you're like oh, i'm gonna write the great american novel because i know how to do it I was a weird 19 year old in which, in which I was like, I am young and dumb and I need wisdom from everyone around me, but I'm still going to do this foolhardy thing. So, but I just thought that a, a tattoo shop seemed like a very rich fictional setting. Um, this was actually before Miami Inc. and all those reality shows had come out, but I just thought, gosh, a lot of interesting things could happen there. I was fascinated with the art form of tattooing. So, and then as far as Gina, I, I mean, I just was a misfit in high school. You know, I was one of the kids who got like gum thrown at them and got picked. And I, you know, I actually was the kid making out in the back row probably. Um, so, <laughs> but also a nerd, but I, there's, I no, wanted... there's a statue of limitations on these things. Just be careful. <laughs> just be careful, June. Be it's careful been many here. years since I was in junior well, I don't, high. I don't, okay. Just be careful. Um, yeah. So I, I wanted to write a book for, Somebody else who felt alone, um, somebody else who felt a little quirky in high school and that they could see themselves in the pages of a book and know that there's a future. So that's sort of the the triad of reasons, I suppose. Okay. So once again, I'm here on an audio medium talking about a visual thing. Uh, the cover of your book. Charlie doesn't understand how podcasts work. I know. You know when they say it's not my first rodeo? Well, apparently today is mine. 110 episodes, but okay. The cover of this novel is fantastic. So for those of you that may not be into the reading thing as much as some of us are, definitely go to bookshop.org to check out the cover of the book. We'll put that link in our bio so you can at least see what we're talking about. It's yes. like two mermaids. It's very, what's the style of that tattooing? Because it it's is definitely old school a, American traditional. It's like an old school American traditional. Yeah. I also love that cover so much. So with the, you know, I also loved the original hardcover cover. Is that the um, red one? The red one is the hardcover with yeah, just the woman's face on it. Yeah. That's the original hardcover. Yeah. So I, I love that one too. Um, I was able to have some input on some edits I requested to that one. And I, I liked the, the final thing that chick looks pretty cool. Um, but I am absolutely over the moon in love with the paperback cover with the two mermaids on it. They were going for just a, a little bit of a grittier vibe, I think, for the paperback edition. And they approached a couple of women tattoo artists. They actually sent me some links and said, you know, what oh. do you think of their work? And they let me weigh in on that. And they eventually went with uh, Becca Janae Bacon, who's a woman tattoo artist. She works at Kings Avenue Tattoo in New York City. And she specializes in this kind of old school, school American traditional if you go to her on Instagram, you'll see it. It looks like it's straight out of a time machine, but with these beautiful crisp lines and like some contemporary subject matter. Anyway, I'm I'm in love with this cover, so I'm glad you like it too. Well, that was the first thing I noticed with the cover is it does look like something would get, someone would get as a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Especially like the mermaid part. It's very, very kind of bright colors and sharp lines. Yeah. It's very cool. Thanks. Okay, after reading a book, students have to answer questions in most of our classrooms. Here are three questions they might have to answer. Mine is this. Identify and discuss the central theme or message that the author intended to convey in the story. We do this a lot. For you, though, 
What do you hope readers take away from your character's journey? I'm not at the end of the journey yet. I know she's on her way. But what do you want the takeaway to be as best you can without spoiling anything? Spoiling. I think I can. I, no, I think you I can, can do it without spoiling. You can dance spoilers. around it. You can dance. Okay. I, yes, I think I can because it's pretty a universal coming of age theme. You know, she, I mean, you know, from the beginning of the book, Gina starts out in her brother Dominic's shadow. He owns the tattoo shop. He's 10 years older than her. She really worships the ground he walks on. You know, this has been her sanctuary. He can kind of do no wrong uh, in her eyes. And she thinks that she can find this fulfilling, perfect life she wants by just following all his rules and following his footsteps and staying in his shadow forever. And what she discovers over the course of the book is that she wants to tattoo in her own way. And she has her own artistic identity and her own ideas about how she wants to live and who she wants to love and what she wants to do. And what is it? And justice, you know, about social justice and about community and about how do you run a business ethically and with regard for the people around you. So I think by the end of the book, Gina is learning what is it what is it to be whole what would a life look like in which i felt whole and i was i was living a life that felt true to myself so i guess that's the journey i would like to take a reader on i, I forgot about the other aspect of it too when i said what i loved about the book that i'm mm -hmm. not at the point to see her journey about loving who she wants to love yet because i didn't it, we didn't i personally didn't get to that character yet but yeah. that's also extra layer that i can't wait to get to because in addition mm -hmm. to seeing the world that she wants to be a part of right in front of her. We also have the love that she wants to be a part of as well, also yeah. right in front of her. If if that's how it portrays when you know, I'm not there, I'm just speculating based on what you said. But I'm yeah, yeah. It's a good book. And I know you said earlier about his teachers being busy. I, you know, that I'm saying there's some papers that weren't graded, guys. Papers are gonna you're gonna get your spelling test back on Monday because I had to get the reading it. Like this that is, is really, the really greatest good. honor. Yeah. Thank you yes. very much. It's true. It was I was locked in for this. This was really good when, I, when I really felt great. Now there's gonna be fourth graders that can't spell. Yeah. June, I hope <laughs> you sleep well tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so uh, you know what? I will happily come and teach the fourth graders to spell so you can finish the book. I had, you know, <laughs> did that pandemic homeschooling thing. She we are going to, it, it takes a village. I will yes. help. Thank you. And what I liked about this book, I thoroughly enjoy, and I'm always a sucker for a coming of age story. So that was mm -hmm. the one aspect of the story that I liked in the character's journey was definitely for sure what you said, June, about noticing the potential for life and being out on kind of going, trying to make something out. Where are you going to go in your life? What are you going to do? The bumps along the way that kind of stop you from wanting to do something and life zigs and you have to zag. So I love a coming of age story. So I really enjoyed that aspect of your story. Thank you so much. Oh, you guys are melting my heart. What am I going to do? <laughs> So good. All right. Well, now so we have to program. answer another question. So okay. discuss specific instances where the setting plays a pivotal role in shaping the events of the story. So in other words, how did you go about choosing the setting of the book? I love this question uh, <laughs> because this book is soaked with Long Island. It, you know, it, it smells like salt air and it tastes like bagels and pizza. And I think the setting very much shapes the story. There's Wait, um, hold, hold on. How yeah. Long Island is it? Is there a scene that takes place in a diner? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. So course, then, it's, then it's definitely Long Island. Oh, yes, sir. In fact, there's more than one. And the character is a diner waitress. And, oh, you know we had to have a diner. Mm -hmm. And... The, the town is a fictional Long Island town called Blue Claw, but it is sort of a combination of some Long Island towns where, do you guys want to guess what some of those towns might be? In point. Can I can I guess? Yes, sir. Is Riverhead one of these towns? Yes, Mr. Richardson, it, it is. Mr. McDonald and I are from this town. Mr. McDonald, I know you didn't get to start it yet. This is Riverhead. That uh, I'll say two pages in, I'm like, oh, wait, this is Riverhead. The main street. I knew exactly where we were. And Mr. G was wondering, was there a tattoo parlor in Riverhead? I know exactly. Oh, is that where why that, that came up in, in our group chat? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because this is from, this is where we, Mr. McDonald lived and I lived maybe a bike ride from Main Street. And we were there all the time. We grew up here. And I kept hearing, this is Riverhead. This has to be Riverhead. Every other town is named except for this one, <laughs> Riverhead, which meant this was. So were you, did you live in Riverhead for at one point? Or you just like the town? 
Mr. Richardson, you're making me so happy. Yeah, it's partly Riverhead. There's also, I did live in Riverhead for a bit because my mom lived there. I've sort of lived all over the island. There's also a lot of Shirley Mastic in there because I, I lived there. But like geographically, and I feel like in the beginning of books, there's always this legal disclaimer that's like any resemblance right. to town. So it's I hope like, it didn't, so I hope it didn't blow that up. Sorry, Penny yeah. Random House. So um, one I actually had a question about that. Yeah. It is did you because this was in a Netflix what was that Netflix movie with um they filmed it around End of the World? Oh yeah, yeah End of the World. Of right. Okay, they End of the World. It. So June, there's a Netflix movie, End of the World. But it's a fictionalized town in Long Island. But yet, just like in your story, you comment about going to Shoreham, you're getting on the train, you gotta go to Hicksville, Ronkonkoma. Is there yeah. like some sort of thing that you have to fictionalize name the town? Because the same thing happened I, in that movie where they, mm. the town that they were in was a fictionalized town, but everywhere else they not, went was real. Yeah, I didn't have to, but the reason I wanted to was because I put a lot, of, a lot of things happen in this fictional town of Blue Claw that I didn't necessarily want Riverhead residents being like, well, that's not our history. And that I took some, I mean, yeah. there's some very serious stuff in there about like real estate redlining and like systemic racism and town history that like that is drawn from like all over Long Island and I I just felt like I wanted I was bringing a lot of Long Island into this town but I people get protective of the places where they live and I didn't want people thinking well are you talking about a specific real estate agent or are you discussing a specific chamber of commerce no I'm not I'm just taking things that happened all over Long Island that irritate me to the nth degree in one of the first parts of the book where you mentioned uh describing where the town was and you said kind yeah. of the middle of the fish kind of thing so that's when i thought riverhead yeah. and then yeah. i went through the process in my head and like okay why would she not say river she said the other towns and then i went to the natural like okay so she later on it must get oddly specific about a certain points that you don't want to just say it's this town and i figured it was my yeah. and again and plus you're combining different towns as well I, I, I love that. I felt like that's, and that's one of the reasons I locked it too. I'm like, this feels home to me. You know, I get it. Thank Some of these you. things exist and they do exist all over the island as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. There's a specific bench in Riverhead that you can go to that definitely is Gina's bench. Yep. For sure. Yep. So the book takes place in 1985. I like the fact that the, the, I don't quote unquote bad guy in this yeah. was the real estate. That's like totally 80s. Like the whole time I'm like, it's like the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Thank you for catching that. <laughs> I was like, it's like the Goonies. Cause like nowadays you don't get that kind of like, but in the 80s, every 80s movie, that was the villain. And I was thinking to myself, well, why did you pick that time? But once again, it has to do with the tattooing nature mm -hmm. and the so social implications of tattooing. And it's like, you know, growing up, uh, I happen to know Mr. Richardson and Mr. McDonald do not have any tattoos, correct? Unless you got one hiding on you. No, no. So, you know, when I was growing up, I just, my, my dad being like, you, you don't want to get a, ta a visible tattoo because if you want a professional career, you can't have a, you know, you don't want to have tattoo showing, you know, make sure it's under your sleeves and stuff like yeah. that. And nowadays, you walk into a classroom, this one's got full sleeves, that one got full sleeves. I went to uh, my daughter's back to school night, and there was a student teacher that was completely all up sleeved, all the way up to his neck also. Wow. You know, soon, you know, eventually you can have Post Malone teaching, and it's, you know, kids mm. don't bat an eye. So yeah. it's like, you know, as time changes, accept acceptability, you know, every kid's... Yeah. Everybody nowadays, all kids, their parents all have tattoos, except apparently these two. Yes, yeah, your kids don't have tattoo parents, but it's just, it's part of our culture every day yeah. that kids see the tattoos. So now, you know, they don't even bat an eye. I, I had mentioned to my son one day, I was like, which one of your teachers is the one with the tattoos? And he like, named three of them. And I'm like, no, 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 the ones that have the sleeves of both of her arms. <laughs> and then they named, named two, two yeah. of them. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. The one that it's just like yeah. simplistic, they're not, it's like very, it's it's not like a completely decorated colored in sleeve. It's all black and white and it's spaced out. And he was like, oh, that's, it was his reading teacher. Like I said, eventually, you know, Post Malone, tattooed face, you know, there'll be teachers like that, just like any other career. I mean, I, I, I had to Google Post Malone. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of tattoos because I don't know, I didn't know exactly what it looked like. But uh, my brother is and me, my brother has a ton of tattoos. 
My uh-huh. brother has all of his arms, Bible verses on his chest, everything. Wow. He has my kids' names on his arm. He has Carter, oh. Aiden. Then uh, Bryn came a little bit later. He added Bryn. Bryn, though, there's a little star around her. And I, he showed it to me. I'm like, you know the problem you just caused. Because Carter and Hayden are just written in cursive. Bryn has a bit of a, a, bit of a, a main spot in this whole city landscape. And they still complain to this day. Which led to my son taking a marker at like two years old and writing like things on his hand that look like Uncle Jason. Have you always been in uh, love tattoos, June? Yeah, I for as I I think I've told this story a million times, so forgive me because it's this is just the story I always tell. And um, you, you've never told us. Yeah, you okay, never good. Told okay, great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my first my first visit to a tattoo shop. I was six years old. My mom was getting tattooed. Um, this was in 1987, so this was unusual for suburban mommy to be getting tattooed, let alone taking her kid there. It just, I loved my mother's tattoo. It was just the idea that you could have art in your body really fascinated me. And I just, I just loved my mom. Like I really admired her. She was so strong, so beautiful. You know, she still is. She's just an incredible human being. So anything, tattoos like big mom energy. Yeah, I think it started there, but then I just became really intrigued with the possibilities. And now people, because like technically there's so much more available there's different kinds of machines there's different colors of ink there's different there's ready you don't have to build your own needles anymore there's a lot more available people are just doing such incredible art on skin so i'm just endlessly fascinated my my, my first experience with tattooing was actually my mother as well really it, tell me so mm-hmm. she grew up as a young adult in the time where she was told she wasn't allowed to go to college and so she didn't go to college. So I feel like she had some resentment with things like that. She okay. was more of a be like a women's rights kind of thing. And yeah. you know, at that time, you know, women couldn't even get credit cards and things like that uh, without your husband's, you know, with you know your hus- husband's yeah. signature or bank stuff. So I, it was definitely one of her birthdays. I believe she went to the tattoo parlor in Rocky Point, my probably Cliffs at the time. Oh, and man. got a tattoo for like her 40th birthday or something like that. Good for you, mom. That is that is a cool story. I love that you mentioned all that because I think, you know, kids that are my kids age cannot imagine a time when women were not allowed to have credit cards or their own separate bank accounts or do all all kinds of things. Um, that's a great story. Now, my question for you is identify the main character in a story and analyze their motivations for their actions throughout the book. In other words, if you could have your character give us one piece of advice, what would that be? Who is the main character? No, the main character is Gina Molly, uh, 18 years old aspiring tattoo artist. What are her motivations? Like I said before, she starts out really just wanting belonging. Um, she's grown up in a rough family. Her mother struggles with mental illness, single mom. They don't have a lot of money. Um, you know, she wants what we all want, security, stability, belonging, a sense of purpose. But to feel loved? Yes, to feel loved. I love that you mentioned that. Yeah, to feel like part of a community um you know she's socially awkward socially anxious she wants a friend so she's moving towards all the things that we all move towards but then she eventually you know her motivations become also how how do i have those things and and be fully myself how do i how do i do them without pretending i'm somebody else and is that possible how do you love somebody without grasping how do you love somebody without trying to change them what do you do if you love your family and they you can't be what they want you to be but you want to stay in their life how do you make art and pay the bills how do i make something beautiful and still have a sandwich for lunch you know so uh, those are all i think her motivations if she would give one piece of advice i mean i could be smart aleck about it be like don't get tattooed in somebody's kitchen. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's a good question. I think at the end of the book, I think at no point in the book does Gina feel prepared to give somebody else advice. But I think that she is moving towards a place in life where she, she will one day. So the moral of the story is don't take advice from 18 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. I don't know. If she couldn't give advice. I don't think she feels it's confident enough by the end yet. I know. know it was wasn't until like early 
forties, late yeah, early forties when I felt I was at that phase where I'm now old man Jimmy giving advice. I mean, we can I'm start calling people young buck. Yeah, yeah, I felt like I hit that point, so I, I, I definitely get that. Finally, are there any potential follow-up projects related to this book in terms of sequels or prequels? Do you have any plans for anything else connected to this? That's a great question, too. I'm writing a new book, but it has nothing to do with this particular book. It is also set in suburbia, and weird things also happen. But I am so ready to let these characters live their own lives now. I spent over 20 years writing this book and 20 drafts, and I feel I have thoroughly known them. I'm ready to let them graduate and be out in the world. And however, I was fortunate to um, get a film agent this year. So maybe, you know, I think they're starting to send it out right now. A uh, Netflix so maybe... young adult series. Wouldn't that be sweet? I, I think it would be so this like... show so much. That's amazing. Yeah. That Thank is so you. cool. That I want to cool. watch a show. I hope it works out because how beautiful to see a tattoo shop, you know? Thank you. That's, That's why cool. your next book has to be about three middle-aged podcasters hmm. working their way through the challenging podcasting landscape so Let's we can get it. a Netflix series about that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. You named the plot of my next book. That was uncanny. We knew it. We knew it. <laughs> we knew it. <laughs> June, we're going to play five questions. When we've had guests on before, we ask you five questions. They're not that hard. They're not that tricky. Just answer as best you can. We're having okay. fun. No pressure. Don't overthink. No stress. Just having a good time. All right. Okay. So I hope I don't blurt anything inappropriate. I'm getting nervous. Oh, okay. Because he can edit. Mr. G can edit all this stuff. He's going to add music. It's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. we'll have... All right. Five questions with our guests. Okay. Number Question number one. Which 80s cartoon character had a heart with an arrow tattoo? Oh, shoot. I, I mean, does Popeye count? I don't know about this. Those were anchors. Those are anchors. Oh, I should know this, and I don't. Mm. Right, I'll give you a clue. What? It's on his blue arm. On his blue arm? As opposed to his red arm? Or he's a blue man? He's a blue creature. <laughs> Cartoon. No more hints. Is he? Oh, he's a Smurf. I bet it's. Uh, <laughs> is it? Is it Papa Smurf? No, no, he'd no. be too venerable. <laughs> That's true. That's a great point by you. Thug life tattoo like Tupac <laughs> had. Yeah, it's Papa Smurf. Smurf it, life. Wait, is it Papa Smurf? No, no. we're looking for hefty Smurf. Hefty. Smurf. Hefty. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. He, he was the strong guy. But seriously, okay. it would definitely say Smurf life, not Thug life, because <laughs> they're out there Smurfing. Yeah. You're right. You know mm -hmm. what? That's a great point. All get right. Mr. Smurf that's trying. Okay. No, you get, that's okay. You can get five points out of this. You maybe get four now. In the math I don't even want go. the points. I got so much joy out of that question. I just, <laughs> I'm, your listeners can't see I'm smiling, though. <laughs> this is a, this is an easy question. I think you might be okay with this one. The author George Orwell's book, 1984, Animal Farm, has been read by countless high school students all across the country. What month was George Orwell born in? <laughs> That's the sound of me snorting in ignorance. Yeah, just, I mean, take a guess. What month was he born in? There's 12 months. A one in 12 sure. chance. Let's see. I don't know. September. We're looking for June. What's your June? name again? Oh! <laughs> We're looking Hi! for June. <laughs> that was a layup, dude. I don't know how you really... That was I, I, told, think, I told you not to overthink. Yeah. All I can do is write books. I can't I can't answer trivia. <laughs> okay, that's okay. We can edit this okay. and make it sound like you got it right. We'll, we'll no, it. no, no. Put it all in. <laughs> Humble me in front of my children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, number three. Angers aren't just for Papa. Your character Gina gives herself an anchor tattoo. I can Google search reveal that this many female celebrities have anchor tattoos. Give me the number. A female celebrity. It takes five seconds to Google this. Yes. So how you put it in your research. How many celebrities have the anchor tattoo? Who can it's quantify this? Whoever wrote this statistic on the internet is inventing it. There's you know right what? now a well, female you know, there's celebrity. Li oh, there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. Yes. Right. right. <laughs> now, I am going to say this. We got not it. to offend anyone. No. But celebrities is in air right. quotes. Because I, I did know five of them. Yeah. <laughs> out of the number that's well, eight times that many people. Well, guys, liberally speaking, all four of us are celebrities. Yes. <laughs> that would I'm be very not. It's very liberal. Very liberal but, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a stretch. It's a bit of a stretch. All right. But, uh, uh, none of us have number. anchor tattoos. 
Uh, 72. It is 40. 40. Close. <laughs> Close. Now, out of this list that I literally Googled, mm-hmm. all I said was people who have anchor tattoos, celebrity. Uh-huh. Margot Robbie, the actress oh. who stars as Barbie. Yes, yes. Her tattoo story is crazy. So apparently on the set of Peacemaker, she mm-hmm. was just like, let's get tattoos. No, she and wasn't on Peacemaker. It was Suicide Squad. Su- okay. Yeah, on Suicide Squad. She's like, let's get tattoos. And then she's like, I'll do them. And she's given out all sorts of her tattoos are like um, the X's for the eyes and a smiley face, like a Nirvana t-shirt. Oh, my. And she has one on her toe. But apparently Will Smith was like, I'm drawing the line. I'm not getting one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a great story, though. Now we know where all that wow. anger came from. Um, you Number doing four. Okay. You're doing okay. I'm doing terrible, but it's I'm so happy. It doesn't matter. Go on. The 40 was a, it was a random number that you might have just randomly guessed, but it's okay. It's I did say it five seconds, and it was eight times that many. I did throw that. I didn't want to Google. I don't like to look at my phone when I'm talking to people. It feels like okay. rude. even if I could win a game show, I'm just like, right. let's roll with it. Anyway, question four. Uh, you, I feel bad because I look at my phone twice now since we're doing this because my kids keep texting me. And oh, I, I wasn't like, trying I feel to. Oh, judging well. me. She's judging me now. No, judging. no, First, I don't know what she did. They made me sit on the sideline for ten minutes, and then this. It's just terrible. Uh, you told us that you enjoy going to Renaissance festivals. What is this year's price for an adult admissions ticket to a Renaissance fair in Cedo, New York? It's open on weekends, Labor Day, August 17th to October 6th. Um, we're just trying to get a free promotion. I'm not going to lie. We're trying to take advantage of this moment. What do you think the cost for an adult admissions ticket would be to the Renaissance fair? Shoot. I think we usually try to buy them on sale, and I might not have the best idea. Uh, like, okay, for this coming season? Yeah. Yeah. For an adult ticket. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's inflation everywhere. I bet whatever I guess will be too low. Forty-two dollars. Wow. Forty well, dollars. That's really good. Well, well, the you retail kinda... price is forty-eight, but I saw a Groupon for forty-two, so I'm going to give it to her. <laughs> yeah, give it to Wait, her. Wait, is yeah. that real? Wait, no, I got that right. Forty-eight dollars. Yeah. Well, you I mean, I said so forty-two, close. but okay. Well, I don't want anyone okay. to look us up. Like, well, be yeah, like, price is right. She's she's rules count. You're the closest. Yeah. We're not going over. Closest right. without I mean, going over. No one else guessed, but okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> Listen. Uh, yeah, you, you know what? Point. I guess 54. And <laughs> she wins, guys. Yeah, $48. I was like, oh, wow. That's, that's, uh, what? you got your family. I'm a family of five. So the kids' prices were like half of that. So you spent a pretty penny week. going up there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get there and you got to buy the giant turkey leg and the stein full of beer. And, you know, I love the giant and your cost and your buy a stein full of beer. I'm going to buy a, a, a stein full of mead. The mead, mead. Quite sweet. Yes. All right, June, this is your last question. Now you're 0 for 4. Now listen, um, to be fair, <laughs> yeah, the celebrity one. For four. one yeah, well, I know, but the, to be fair, the celebrity one could have been a tough guess, and I get the pricing one. I'm upset about the hefty smartphone, not going to lie. And you missing should be. June, I mean, you know. Yeah. But yeah, we love having you on the show. You're doing great. It's your fifth question. I think you're going to do okay. I think it is okay. feels good to me. Okay. Uh, Publishers Weekly said this. I adored this novel. It's a story about being an awkward, misfit girl with big dreams in a man's world. What novel are they referring to? Uh, it feels immodest to say, but I, I think they mean mine. <laughs> you guys are very sweet, and that was a very fun <laughs> quiz. I'll fail your quizzes any day. This is great. Nice. You know, there's a five point curve. So I think you're great on the curve all the time. Yeah, we're great on the curve. We did try to do five. Um, Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a blast. It was a joy. Absolute joy. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it greatly. And I think your podcast is so cool and fun. And uh, I hope your students appreciate you and treat you well. So, June, tell us our fans again where they can find your book, where we can find you on social media and Instagram. If you have any of those things, please. Instagram as uh, at june.gervais.writer. Uh, my novel is called Jobs for Girls with Artistic Flair. I always encourage people to get it at a local indie bookstore. So if I, you're on Long Island, um, a book place in Riverhead is quite nice. And there's also the next chapter in Riverhead. Lots of good indie uh, bookstores. You mean in uh, Blue Cove or whatever the town was? <laughs> Blue, Claw. Blue Claw. Blue Claw. That's what it was. There's no resemblance to any town living no, in it. Um, it could have been Blue Point. Yeah. <laughs> or 
you could also get it as an alternative to amazonbookshop.org is a great book selling site that you can get all the same stuff, but support indie bookstores. So, or you can get it at the library because I love libraries so much. That's where I got your book from. I'm rocking, we are friends bro. of all libraries. Love mm -hmm. libraries. And my website is junegervais.com. June, thank you so much again for being here. And when you write another book or anytime you want to join us, you're more than welcome to be on the Fan Learn podcast. We love having you today. Yes, please. You guys are rock and roll. She was so much fun. Her laugh, though. Her laugh is great, too. By the way. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. For June Gervais and Mr. McDonald and Mr. G, my name is Miss Richardson. Thank you always for listening. June's children, I'm really sorry what we've done to you today. You'll miss Fortnite. We will see you next time on the podcast. Talk to you guys soon.